Hello everyone, we hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F16C. We're going to do a video, basically a tour of the cockpit, looking at pretty much all the buttons and controls. So we've got it all in there for the record. Note that WAGS has already done a video of this, or very similar, so that's out there. But we just want to do our own one, so that we can have a full suite of tutorial videos and we haven't missed anything out. So, the first thing is that we've got it fairly conveniently split into five different sections. So front and I'm going to do my best to encompass what is this front section here so everything you see what I'm drawing around here everything that I would call the front dash is known as the instrument panel technically I'm probably going to refer to it as a dash because I just always have done next we have our left auxiliary panel I'm framing it here next we have a left left console I'm framing it here this is the big one probably leave this till last right auxiliary panel I'm framing here right console and framing here so let's start on the dash first thing HUD's head up display uh, reflector display I'm sure you all know what a HUD is. HUD is for the actual symbology here I've got a full tutorial video showing all the different symbologies in all the different modes next is our UFC our upfront controls this encompasses two sections we've got here the ICP and we've got here the DED and they work together this is a display only and this display is worked by the ICP here so for instance we're in a basic CNI page here which is comms navigation and IFF and it, it includes those various things but it can have uh, various other pages so for instance if I went to list here on the ICP I could choose any of those sub pages by pressing the relevant button or if I didn't want list then I could just go into another page like TACAN ILS here and that would have the TACAN ILS page there, and so on. If I ever want to get out back to the main CNI page, you hit this, it's called the Dobber or the DCS. Then I go to return there, so it's a left movement. There we go, gets us back to the CNI page, and a steer point page, that will be there, and so on. So that's where we can enter, we can enter numeric numbers there. Up front access to our primary radio, UHF COM1, and you can see information comes here. Out of interest, this information can be displayed on the HUD if you want it as well. COM2, our primary VHF radio, information on the IFF, uh, shouldn't really be coming out there at the moment, I should say this is October 2019, early access uh, list, we've already looked at that, master modes, we can be in basic nav, let me just get back off there, so master mode nav is the default, or you can have master mode air to air, air to air mode, or master mode air to ground mode, it's going to default to CTIP in that case, press the button again and it goes back to your default nav mode uh, we've got enter button here to uh, you know just as a return enter rcl i don't know what it stands for but it's just a backspace is what that is recall that was recall is it roger yep okay increment so if i wanted to increment something so if i go back to my basic cni page i wanted to increment for instance a steer point increment up decrement down Dobber, this is, if you like, our main way to navigate. Actually, once you're in the DED page, we navigate with the Dobber. And we can go, you know, see, move up and down like that. If you want to change something, you can press the sequence and it will change in this case. It, it depends on which page you're on to what the sequence is going to do, but that's a bad example. But if you, it will change something major on that DED. And return will always take you back to the CNI page, which is what you've got there. Our drift cutout, this is an interesting little thing. So if we're flying in a major crosswind quite slowly and our instrumentation, like our path marker here, had been essentially blown off the side of the HUD so it was no longer visible, you can recenter it back onto the HUD with our HUD cutout switch. Next is our FLIR, our forward looking infrared. We're not sure if our Block 50 Viper is going to get this or not, um, but it's going to be IR viewable from the HUD here, we believe, and there are controls that can control it in terms of gain and in terms of increment and whatnot, but at the moment it's not a thing. Hard symbology brightness. We've got regards that flow that we talk about brightness here, contrast here. If we have a reticle for manual bomb aiming, for instance, here is a method in which, or one of the methods in which we could depress it downwards to add extra lead to our shot, but that's not in at the moment. That's that. We're going to head on down south to our main flight instruments. We have a speedometer and Mac meter combined. We've got hundreds of knots around the outside here. And we've got our Mac in the center there. Maximum speed is shown there at about 800 
knots. Here is our barometric altimeter and it is showing, the big needle is showing hundreds of feet, thousands are going to be shown here and here. You can see our QFE or our, our, our air pressure is set in imperial measurement, inches mercury, we can change it with this knob. And we can change the mode of the altimeter, electric, hold left, and I think it's right, hold right click for pneumatic because it is a electro or a servo pneumatic altimeter. Our angle of attack gauge here does exactly what it says on the tin. You can see we are currently traveling at 0 0.5 degrees angle of attack, static. Uh, it's color coded as well, so as you get higher angle of attack, it turns, starts to turn red. A basic ADI, so we've got roll, and so it's attitude, we've got roll, and we've got ADI, uh, I should say, attitude direct indicator, I think. It's going to tell us our roll, it's going to tell us our pitch, it's going to tell us our yaw slip with this little guy down here. In addition to that, it's going to tell us our glide slope guidance and our um, localizer guidance for ILS, if we have our ILS turned on. Got a video on that. We've got an adjuster a trimmer here where we can trim in terms of elevation or pitch, should I say. Vertical velocity indicator here in thousands of feet per minute. So you're doing up here plus a thousand feet per minute, minus a thousand feet per minute in terms of vertical velocity. HSI, horizontal situation indicator. Mm, I guess you think of it a bit like a compass or a map. And it can point you to different objects. Uh, we can have it in basic nav mode, which is the basic mode of this uh, system which is EGI which is combined GPS and INS inertial navigation system GPS global positioning system we can change it to PLS which actually means ILS in this case it is ILS instrument landing system or we could have it in TACAN tactical air navigation in which we can use TACAN and whichever mode you're in you're going to have a bearing pointer there you're going to have a course line there with a deviation marker which I can't get up at the moment probably because we're on the ground or maybe Let's have a little go. No, just because we're on the ground. Uh, reciprocal bearing there. Reciprocal course there. We have these markers here are how far out the course deviation line is. We've also got a distance there to our uh, point of interest, depending on what type of navigation we've got there, nautical miles. We've got a course that we can set there. So you can see the course readout there. We've also got a heading marker selector, but we do not have any readout for it. Any other function you can think of the um, the HSI? No, not at this time. The turn indicator, I believe, is not oh. functional at this time. Yeah, this should have a turn indicator on it, but it doesn't work at the moment. Okay. Uh, not here to adjust the pedals. Doesn't work. Probably never will do because there's no need for it. Fuel quantity select. This knob here tells uh, uh, it lets us inquire of the uh, fuel gauge here how much fuel we've got in certain parts of the uh, ship so I won't go through freely so basically all how much is in the uh, reserve uh, uh, reservoir how much is in the inner wing tanks how much is in the exterior wing tanks how much is in the exterior center tank and so on this guy here oh we never fully got to the bottom two in fact unless you want to have a go at it I'll say I'm going to leave this one we did cover it properly we, in our fuel tutorial we did we covered it in the fuel tutorial yeah, so that's that. it just has to do with which tanks you drain first RWR radar warning receiver. This is going to sh allow us to view r exterior or external radar threats. And we've got a full video on it, so we're not going to go through it now. You'll need to turn it on for it to work, which is going to be down here. Here are um, buttons that allow you to configure exactly what you see, and it's all covered in our RWR tutorial in the F16 uh, playlist. So that's all that together there. Here we have our angle of attack indexer. This tells us what our angle of attack in, uh, is compared to our ideal. Our ideal for landing is 11 to 13 degrees. That would be a circle in the middle. If we're too high angle of attack, uh, sorry, too low angle of attack and too fast, we get the chevron here. And if we get a guy, a chevron up there, our angle of attack is too high, our speed is too low. Over here is our nose wheel steering indicator. Press nose wheel steering and that comes on there, nose wheel steering. Um, also, this will come on this green one if we are air-to-air -air refueling and we are taking fuel. If we are air-to-air -air refueling, ping, and we're not taking on fuel, and it's not going to work here on the ground by the looks. Oh, there we go, ready. So we're ready to take on fuel, but we're not taking on fuel. And if we're disconnected from a tanker, then a, a disconnect light would be down here. MFD is two of them. Uh, we can use them to display various pages of information. We've got a full video on what works, which pages can be displayed. Overspeeds around the outside allow us to 
change things in here so I can click on that and I can go to any page I want uh, TGP or uh, I don't know uh, uh, weapons or stores management system and so on we can change the gain here of the screen we can change the brightness here of the screen I don't think this is working yet but it will do obviously contrast of the screen symbology uh, brightness probably and same thing over here for MFD number two Next, we're going to have a look at our miscellaneous panel, as it's known, RF. So this allows to change what mode of or what methods of electromagnetic radiation we send out. So normal, we can use send out any electro, uh, any EM, basically. Choir ensures that we cannot uh, send out certain levels of radiation, like it will stop our radar from sending out radiation, but it, certain other systems will be able to do it. Uh, silent means it's going to cut all of our radiation. Um, I guess it's quite a cool thing, really, because we can have we can be tracking something on the radar, and if we want to stop the radar transmitting, but we don't want to lose our you know radar setting and whatnot, we can just quickly go down to quiet, and that's uh, that would be a very useful thing to do to avoid SAMs, to avoid detection, and then we go back to normal. Everything just starts transmitting again. It's pretty cool. When it's uh, in quiet mode, it will still transmit IFF. Roger, yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's something important then. We mustn't forget about that, RC. We can get ourselves in real trouble with that. ECM electronic countermeasure is not working at the time of making this video, but when the ECM is on, then this light will show. Laser, this is the laser on the lightning T-pod, whether its master arm is on or off. Alt release here, so if you try and release a bomb with weapons release button and it doesn't work, which it happens, then you have a backup release button here to drop the bombs. Master arm, that's what it says, master arm on. Master arm off and simulate. So if we're doing training and we want to simulate a bomb drop or a missile firing, that's how we do that. Moving down here, autopilot. So we have we have pitch and we have roll. We can have altitude hold. We can have uh, to the bottom attitude hold. I think there is. We've also got heading select and steering select in terms of roll. This knob at the moment doesn't work. This does. They will both work soon at some point. Advanced mode, this is here, but this is not a function on the type of Viper that we've got, the Block 50 as it's called. Here we have our eyebrow lights, they're not all working at the moment as far as we understand. What we do have is a master caution, you know, if something goes wrong, then this will glow, and if you want to cancel the master caution, click on it, obviously. We've got a fault acknowledgement, I guess, similar thing. Um, if you want to acknowledge that you've seen a fault, uh, you need to tell the aeroplane that you acknowledge that fault there. And IFF ident, so uh, if you press this, then initiates the IFF response to an interrogator or an air traffic controller. I'm not sure what that, 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 and that passive ones do. So there's a TF fail that comes up, and that's terrain following oh, fail, which is we, not implemented. We don't have that in this block 50, I know that. We're moving over to here, we've got backup ADI. In fact, I'm not sure that's technically a backup ADI. I think it's a backup artificial horizon. I stand to be corrected if this is actually a backup ADI. Uh, just trying to get my terms right there. We can cage it and uncage it and trim it. Fuel flow to the single engine in pounds per hour. Engine uh, indicators. We've got oil pressure for the engine. We've got the nozzle position 100% open or 0% closed. It doesn't close fully, obviously, but I'm sure you know what I mean by that. The percent speed of the engine in terms of, you know, it's spinning. And we have the turbine inlet temperature here in times 100 Celsius, I believe. And this engine can go really high in terms of temperature. It's a really impressive engine there. Rudder. Stick. Oh, no, we'd have to stick over here. Haha, <laughs> that's weird. One thing we've missed out. This kind of drift cutout switch there. If we want to reset the warning, you know, warning reset, we can go down there. I just found out about that. Uh, next, we've got these uh, lights here. Now, forgive me if I get these in the wrong order, but I believe this is the engine and engine fire warning light. Hydraulic and oil pressure warning light. Uh, we've got the um, FLCS, the kind of flight control system, and DBU warning light. We've got the takeoff configuration warning light, if you're in the wrong configuration, which we'll talk about in a bit. And I believe that last one is the canopy or and oxygen low lights there. Okay, so that's the dash done, as far as I can see. Next is the right auxiliary panel, nice easy one. Magnetic compass as a backup. We've got the uh, fuel gauge here, and it's a relatively complex fuel gauge because it's a complex system in this aircraft. It's got two needles. Uh, they, those needles tell you different things depending on what you've got here. Here is a total, so whatever these no needles are showing, this is always going to be the total of what's in the aircraft, including external bags. Hydraulic pressures, so we've got A and B, redundancy, hydraulics systems in this aircraft. I believe that's a redundant system. 
So it's something to bear in mind. Here we have the pilot faultless display. So it's not working at the time of making this, but we believe if something goes wrong, if a fault happens, then it's going to say basically, hello pilot, the lift oh, stabilizer is snapped or something like that. And then you can action that and then clear the list, but not working yet. Uh, next we have the caution light panel here. So all sorts of caution lights and you can have multiple cautions on at once. It's going to tell you all sorts of stuff here. Engine stuff, hydraulic stuff, landing gear stuff, all sorts of stuff there um, that uh, need to be acknowledged and fixed as we are flying. EPU fuel. We do not have an APU. We have an EPU, an emergency power unit in case we lose engine. Obviously it's a single engine plane. It burns hydrazine and that is the amount of hydrazine in it uh, in terms of a percent and it will run for about a about quarter of an hour I believe. Here is our clock and it's a clock. And we can wind that and, and change that. Here is our cabin pressure. Um, I'm pretty sure that's our cabin pressure. I could never actually manage to find a way of looking at it because the stick's in the way. So bear in mind that's a thing. Uh, we have the control stick mounted here. Now I can't press these buttons with my mouse but I, they can press them by the uh, the actual joystick, the HOTAS, and you can move it around slightly. It's a very low movement stick, it's more kind of pressure based than actual movement, so I imagine that takes a while to get used to in this aircraft. I'm not sure I can actually use that. Next we're going to move on to the right console. We've got first of all sensor power here, it's kind of hidden again, but we've got our sensors, our radar, altimeter, we've got our actual search and acquisition radar, and we've got the right hard point uh, on the fuselage, left hard point on the fuselage, so we can send power to these various sensors. Um, and obviously for the sensor to work, you need to give it power. Next, we've got the HUD. This, we've got a full video on this, so we're not going to go through them all, but these are elements that we can configure on our HUD. So do we want to show our DED data on the HUD? Do we want to, which uh, uh, depressible reticle do we want to show? Uh, do we want day or night mode? Do you want to show what type of radar altitude and so on? What type of speed, TAS, CAS or ground speed? Next we've got internal lights, we've got consoles, instrument panel and these lights are really, really well modelled. Uh, we've got the DED, floodlights, consoles, instrument lights, flood. Uh, this guy here controls the indicator and caution lights and we can brighten them or we can dim them. Air conditioning, so our, you know, our method, uh, sorry, our, uh, we want it cool, do we want it automatic, do we want it warm, and so on. Uh, our air source, do we want it ram from outside, do we want it dump, do we want it normal, do we want it off. Zero rise, this is quite cool, so if we crash land, for instance, or force landing, we need to destroy sensitive data, open him up, and pow, or pow, to destroy things. It'll be interesting to know how that works. In fact, I'm going to write that down because we've got an interview with the crew chief soon. Funny little switch here, voice message. If you want to inhibit all of the voice messages, you do that. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that is a thing. Part of our cipher system here, as far as I'm aware, this doesn't do anything, but uh, that's there. We can choose those two options. Controls the which radio is sent the KY-58 encryptor. So CRAD-1 is the UHF and CRAD-2 CRAD is the VHF. In plain, neither radio is encrypted. Thank you, well, see. That is the hand rest, but it also provides support when you're at 9G, I guess. Right, so this is... So uh, your hand doesn't fall off. Yeah, yeah. right, your hand's going to weigh a bit. Roger, okay. We've got the KY-58. Now, it's going to be impossible for me to get a good view of this. This is all to do with ciphering, isn't it? KY-58? Not IFF, yes. it's ciphering. Uh, none of this, at the moment, is modelled in DCS. It may be a thing one day, so we can turn all the knobs. It's not actually going to do anything... This, we're not sure what this is. We think it's part of the ciphering system, but we can't find any information, DCS or NATOPS. Next is the O2 panel. We need to breathe. So we've got our flow meter there, confirming that we've got flow. We've got our PSI of our system here. This is an interesting one. Do we want the system off? Do we want it on? Or do we want it P... Oh, I've forgotten. Um, what, uh, what is this one, RC? PBG. PBG. It activates pressure breathing for G function, which supplies high pressure oxygen during high G maneuvers to right. reduce fatigue. So if you're doing an air show or you're doing a dogfight, bung it in PBG, like you'd never get time to do that. Uh, right, next we've got, uh, do we want it a normal mix, a dilution if you like, or 100%? Uh, so it'd be interesting if anyone knows why, I, did, I still haven't found a reason why you do that. But Next we have, do we want to, is it an emergency, is it normal operations, or are we testing the mask? And a lot of these modules as well, remember this is all modelled. Uh, in the Hornet for instance, if your air supply goes bang then you pass out and die. 
Uh, so just remember that is a thing. Avionics power. Uh, I guess we start here. INS, our inertial navigation system. Do we want it off? Do we want to align the system with a stored heading? Do we want to do the normal four minute alignment? Do we run in a normal navigation uh, mode? Do we want to do an in flight align? Do we want to do an attitude align? And I can't remember what Cal is. We're going to do Cal is unfunctional. We'll do a video on this when it's all working, currently not working. So, very important power switches. Our first one, MMC, our modular mission computer. Um, I'm not really sure what that means. We think it might be flight control, but, well, it is what it is. You can't go without it, basically. Uh, STSTA stores stations, so, you know, the stations that hold the bombs and stuff. MFDs, power to the two MFDs. UFC, the ICP, the DED, as we looked at before. Map, uh, we think is terrain mapping, which we don't have in the Block 50. Do you agree with that, RC? Yeah, that would be for your digital terrain map. I'll jump. Uh, GPS, obvious data link, and we've got MIDS LVT. It's the Multifunction Information Distribution System, MIDS. To be honest, we just don't know what this does yet. Uh, we know we have to have it on, but that's all we know. So apologies, that's something we'll figure out. Just out of interest, just reading the manual, it looks like we can actually delete all, or zeroize all data. Uh, in the zero position, so that's something that remains to be seen. We'll pop up here our anti ice, whether we want it on, forced on, automatic, or off uh, for the engine. We Our antenna select so far, our I uh, IFF, do we want to use our upper antenna, our normal, which I'm assuming is either interpolation or automatic selection, or our lower antenna, that's something you get in real planes, it's not modeled in DCS, but it's just a thing. And our UHF radio, same thing, are we going to use our upper antenna? It may say VHF radio as well, and I can't get to see it. Or uh, do we want to use our lower antenna? Again, it doesn't really matter. It's not modeled in DCS, probably never will be. That is the front dash down, the right auxiliary, and the right console. Let's jump around to the left auxiliary. Right, I missed one. Seat elevation. Does it work? It does. How about that? Electric seat. Very good. Okay, so hook. This is not an arrestor hook for carriers, although we are going to use it for that because we are the Grim Reapers, but it is uh, used for emergencies at airfields, so hook up and down. We've got our gear condition light, so green means that the three gears are down and locked, so if one light was not up, you'd know that gear was not down and or locked. Emergency drawers stores the jettison, does exactly what it says on the tin, it's going to dump everything apart from probably your sidewinders. We still haven't uh, done a full video because jettison's not fully working on the F-16 at the moment. Ground jettison enabled. Do we want to be able to jettison stores on the ground? We can enable that. Brakes. We've got two different hydraulic systems for the brakes. Do we want to use channel 1 or channel 2 for that? You'd only use channel 1 if, uh, sorry, channel 2 if channel 1 was damaged, not working. We can have our parking brake on. We can have our anti-skid turned on, or we can have neither turned on. Stores config. If you're an air-to-air -air loadout, then you want to be in cat one. If you're in a, if you're in an air-to-ground, and or you have fuel tanks on, number three. Do you know um, the the details behind that, RC? Stores config switch determines how how much maneuvering the flight control system lets you perform. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, Cat 3, the FLCS, assumes you have bombs or large missiles and will permit less maneuvering. Yeah, angle of attack, departure resistance. Okay, yep, fine. So, be it horn, um, we get a, a um, uh, like a warning if we're in a configuration where the gear should come down. Uh, if we want to silence that horn, we can silence it there. It can be annoying. Landing lights, do we want taxi lights? Do we want none or do we want our landing lights on? Got our landing gear here. I suggest not pressing that. Uh, that will retract our landing gear. When our gear are in travel, it will glow red. And uh, down lock. Can you remind me what that is, uh, RC? Down lock? Down lock releases the lock on the gear when you're on the ground. And so if you were to raise the handle, the gear will collapse. Yeah, I'm going to do that in a minute. <laughs> CMDS, countermeasure dispensing system, got a full video on this, so we're not going to go through all the buttons, but the buttons work, but the master modes here aren't all fully implemented yet, so um, you choose your master mode here if you remember, choose your preset program here, if you want to change your programs, you do that on the DED, uh, change here, you've got uh, other one, other two, chaff, flares, whether we want to jettison the flares, it's a warning system, we don't have that on the block 50, Viper, Jammer, RWR, that is not whether they're on or off, it's whether the control information can be used by the CMDS system. That's the CMDS, go and watch the video if you want. The uh, uh, helmet mounted queuing system, the helmet display, turn it on, we turn it off. The speed brake currently closed, and if it were open, then it would be open. Very useful indicator there. RWR, 
Uh, do we want this power on? As we've looked at, these guys here do not work at the moment. We're not sure if they are going to work, so I'm going to leave them out for now. We have a dimmer switch for the RWR, and I don't know what the free amp thing is there. Probably a fuse, I imagine. Uh, emergency gear release in case primary doesn't work there, not modelled currently. We've got our panic uh, button. Uh, what's it called? The panic slapper? Something like that. Panic slap switch here. So that allows yes. you uh, to send out two chaff and two flare over one second. I believe so. Roger, so I this believe that's what the program is for it. This is the proper way that you send out your chaff and flare. If you don't have time and you see a missile, you hit the panic switch there. Pa, 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 pa. That's the left auxiliary. Last panel. Let's go to the left console. Unfortunately, it is the biggest. So get ready. So left console, we'll start up here oh. and test. Uh, this is nope. not my area of expertise, but I know if we want the probe heat on, because I've had to do it from time to time. When it's on, it heats the angle of attack and pitot tubes. Roger. When it's in tests, it tests the circuit. Roger. We've got up here, fire and overheat detect test button. When held, it tests the fire detection circuits, and you should see fire and overheat cautions light up. Thank you. Obox, this is going to be O2. Ah, not functional at the moment. Something to do with testing the oxygen almost certainly. Uh, looks like EPU generator. EPU slash gen test switch. You used to test the EPU and its generator. When you hold it down, you advance the throttle until the EPU is receiving enough air to power its generator. Then you verify the EPU is generating power and the relays are functioning. Interesting. When I, when I press it, the test, when I press and hold, we get some little lights come on uh, down here. So it's interesting, but... Okay. Next is MAL and uh, INT light test button. When held, it illuminates all cockpit panel and warning lights and sounds all VMS alerts. How about that? That's cool. So, yeah, I was unaware it, that. Well, you'll hear all the voice messages. Absolutely. Right, I didn't realize that. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's going through the uh, different uh, things. This guy here, the, uh, the flight control system power test. Used to verify that each of the four flight control computers that make up the FLCS are functioning. Right, so we've got maintenance down there, we've got normal, and we've got test. Okay, interesting. Next, we're on to flight control. So, RC, can you tell me digital backup? Digital backup sec switch selects the FLCS software in case there is a fault with the main software system. Roger, makes sense. It will be accompanied with the light on the warning panels. Roger. Okay, we've got alt flaps, extend, and normal. Alt flap switch only functions when the flight control computer is in standby gains. If the flight computer is in standby gains and the alt flap switch is in norm, the trailing edge flaps will extend and retract along with the landing gear and extend the flaps extend no matter what. Okay, makes sense. Just realized we've got default handles <coughs> here as well, which we go to min and max, so. Um, all right, I'll see. We've got a manual TF FL yup. Um, okay, the one. manual TF fly-up switch controls a protection feature of the terrain following system. We don't have it, do we? We don't have the nope, in the box right 50, so ignore that. Next, we've got a leading edge flaps lock. Leading edge flaps switch controls the leading edge flaps. The LEFs are controlled automatically by the flight control when in auto, or can be held in their current position by putting the switch in lock. Okay, so we can lock that in position. That's interesting. Okay, fine. Uh, we've got the flight control system, FLCS, with reset and off, so I'm not sure what that does. The reset switch can momentarily be placed in reset position to reset the flight control system's internal database of system failures. Interesting, okay. So it might be something... It we'll clears the failures, basically. Roger. Uh, next, we've got what looks like a built-in test, so that's going to run a built-in test. Anything more on the built-in test? When the test is running, the run light illuminates. If the test fails, the fail light illuminates. Roger. Does it take a certain cycle time? It doesn't say. Roger. So, okay. Oh, here's a fail. Turned it off and I failed it. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> if leave you it. turn it off before the test is over, Roger. I believe it goes into yeah. fail. Right, so those panels, they're not really Grim Reapers type panels. They're not the kind of things we're ever going to play with, to be honest. But that's all there and it appears to be modeled and good. Manual trim panel here. So I'm going to go with the ones that I know. So uh, we've got a, a trim bitch here. It's a gauge. It tells you what our trim is set at. Let's just see if I can actually change that manually. You see, I'm changing it now with the trim control, uh, which is cool. And I've got roll trim up there, and your trim, I don't actually have set as my HOTAS, so I'd actually have to turn it like that. That's interesting. Uh, this is an automatically trimmed plane, and despite what some people keep saying, you do, in some cases, still need to... Oh, the, yeah, the uh, built-in test is run and complete, and we did not have any failures. Interesting. 
Um, you do need, to, in some cases, uh, tri to trim this aircraft, and there is your manual trim. And we've got one more RC, which is trim dash AP disconnect. They're going to need you for that. So basically, that will disconnect the trim from the stick and the autopilot. So if you disconnect, you can only adjust trim from that panel and not from the autopilot or the stick. Okay, thank you. Fuel control. So we've looked at uh, before fuel monitoring, if that's the right word. Now we need to look at fuel control. So we've got this guy here. This is uh, well, just the best way of... This is going to... Like our master stopcock, if you like, in, in the center of the system. This little, If you turn this off, we can't transfer fuel between tanks, etc. We've got tank inerting. This will fill the empty space in the tanks up with... I think it's argon. I've forgotten. It's a... Uh, halon. Okay, inert gas to stop them from exploding or reduce the risk. Engine feed, do we want to balance the feed aft or forward, uh, or it's inversed, I can't remember now, but if you want to, you know, balance, change the balance there, or automatic there, or no balancing there. Uh, air to air refuel, we've already seen that, if you want to open up the door, uh, that, and if you want to close the door there. Canopy jets in there, we're not going to push it, because I know exactly what's going to happen there. IFF, now this is currently not implemented in this model at the moment. IFF is going to be implemented into this Block 50 at some point, however, we're not sure to which level of detail yet, so we're not sure if anything is going to go here. Probably um, uh, the master knob we'll need to do, but we're not sure if we have to do anything else yet. So we're going to come back to that panel when we know more about that. There is a switch that says CNI, and what that does is the CNI switch controls how the pilot should tune the TAC and radio. Um, if it's in UFC, you can tune it on the UFC. If it's in backup, it says this panel is used to tune TACAN. I don't see where you do it. Why is this on the IFF board? No idea. Mm, okay. Uh, one thing I do know in your startup procedure, you do have to put that to the USC. Right, exterior lighting is all going to be pretty easy, whether you want your um, anti collision. Now, uh, these lights, again, aren't working in October 2019, so we can't tell you exactly how they function at the moment. But we've got our anti collision, we all know what anti collision lights are, we've got different uh, programs, if you like, we can use there. Do we want our position lights to flash or to be steady? Uh, do we want our wing tail position lights to be bright, off, or dim? Fuse large position lights, bright, off, or dim. Air to air refueling light, for obvious, for obvious reasons. Uh, we've got that there. Uh, and we've got our master. So this will change us. Uh, this will change the exterior lighting based on uh, the configuration of the pilot. Uh, who's looking at the lights? So if you are, for instance, have night vision goggles, again, we don't know exactly how this works yet, but if you had night vision goggles, you may have it on a certain level. If you're air-to-air -air refueling, you may want it on a certain level. If you're a normal type of flying, on a certain level. So we'll come back to that when we know more. And we've got formation lights, of course. We can go, um, if we want formation lights, and to what level? Next is our AVTR. This is all about, if you like, a TV recorder that can record our flight. It's not implemented, so I don't think it ever will be. So that's just a thing there next is our ecm panel if we can see it there and ecm will be available but it's not available at the time of making this video so i won't be able to go through the switches but that is our ecm panel these next ones i'm going to need to move the throttle just a bit so if i just move up there pause it for a second audio one audio two so how loud do you want the intercom uh, if you want to talk to the ground crew or whatever how loud do you want your tac and beeping for the morse code identifier ils morse code identifier how loud do you want it and whether you want whoops to uh hot mic the hot mic position the pilot can communicate to ground crew via headset jack in the airplane's nose boom operator or the boom operator of a refueling plane Roger. in the cipher position unsecured communications are not allowed Roger, and then we can have the hot mic turned off. We've got master volume or power, if you like, for COM1. That's the UHF primary. We've got a VHF primary radio here, COM2, master volume, if you like. We've got the squelching here, uh, whether we want the it not squelch, whether we want squelch on. This gets rid of the hiss and the radio that all radios get, uh, or analog radios get. We've got guard here. Again, same thing, but for COM2 here. Okay, secure voice is not a thing in DCS, so we don't need to worry about that. Missile tone of our sidewinder, you know, our growl, how, how loud do you want it? Uh, the threat, that is the volume of our RWR system. That will make noises, obviously. Uh, how loud do you want that? And TF is not a thing in the Block 50. Next, we Terrain have... following. Oh, it's terrain following. Right, so, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, so for UHF. Now, we, we, we're arguing at the moment whether this is 
our primary UHF radio or if this is actually a backup. Some, a lot of people on the internet say that this is actually the primary. Personally, I don't think it is. I'm almost certain that this is going to be a backup system. Uh, secondary UHF, I, th I think I stand to be corrected. Normally the UHF radio is controlled by the DED. Now it says if the CNI switch is in backup, the UHF is controlled from this panel. So that's kind of uh, oh. the so, CNI. Right, so this is primary radio then? Right, so, oh, okay, I stand to be corrected. It's like a panel. Right. It's like a two-head radio, and that's one head. Okay, radio. so COM1, primary UHF, it can be controlled by the digital system, as we saw up there, or uh, by the UFC, or controlled by this. So I wasn't aware of that, but there you go. Um, you've got your master mode. Do you want it off? Do you want it main? Uh, do you want your main channel, or do you want to do your main channel and listen to guard, or do you want to do ADF, uh, automatic direction finding, radio navigation is not in... The, uh, this model at the moment it may come in later we'll see the volume of it we've got tone test tone here we've got squelch switch here whether we're going to squelch it or not as talked about earlier we've got i'm struggling with this angle here m and l oh manual um do we want to tune in a manual frequency do we want to cho change a choose a preset frequency or do we want to use guards so that'll be two four three i think uh, here different ways of turning in the digital numbers here to choose a manual frequency uh, we've got our display test here. We've got our status. Status button toggles the main display between showing the manually tuned frequency and showing the frequency corresponding to the preset selected in the channel. Roger, that makes complete sense. Uh, that's fine. So you can see which, you know, so you can look at a preset that you're about to use and see what frequency it is. That makes sense. Right. We've got our uh, channel knob here so we can change between preset channels. I'm pretty sure that's that. And here is the cha preset channel that we've got here. And these are the preset channels that we've got programmed into the radio. We can change them from the radio here or in the mission editor. And most people don't know, you can click up here and you can't do anything, but you can do that. You can hide your cigarettes in there or something. Manual pitch here. This is an interesting one. We haven't tried it yet. We need to try it. So if you're stalling, the un my understanding is that the, uh, the fly-by-wire system won't allow you enough authority in the controls to help get out of a stall. So they've got an override. So if you're stalling, or you know departed or whatever then you can go to override or hold it on and it'll give you more access to the stabilizers and whatnot it'll give you more access to the control system we haven't fully tested that yet and we don't know how it works but that's something we'll test anything you want to add to that rc no nope. uh jet fuel so this is when you're starting the engine up jet fuel switch toggles a jet fuel starter and start one one compressed air accumulator is used to run the jfs and start two both are used you might need to use both on hot days or high altitudes to get enough air pressure for a start. The run light illuminates when the JFS is running. Roger. So, you so it's compressed air. Yeah, it's compressed air to start the engine. Do you want to use two bottles or one? In DCS, we always use two because the bottles are virtual. They're free. Uh, in the real airplane, you might not want to use all both, so you can just use one. Uh, and the lights to show, obviously, when, uh, when it is running. This is, there's a line here, but this is the same panel. This guy here engine cons primary and secondary oh i just turned the engine off do you want to go through that um i'll see toggles between using the primary digital electronic engine computer or the secondary hydro mechanical engine computer normally the sec is used automatically if the deec fails more jump there we go um that'd be interesting so that might be something we have to do one day when we get shot down or crash into each other we've got the other half of our hotas here which is our thrust lever and it's got all these various controls on i'm not going to go through them all now but i've done a video on setting up your hotas and all those controls are talked about there right i've got to kind of move him out the way now so stand by the ab reset and the max power switch do nothing on f-16s why are they there then rc are they just it's a panel taken out of different plane i guess we, it was a different engine it was designed with, ah, and the current yeah. engine doesn't use them. Yeah, understood. Okay, right. So what we've got now is main power, or uh, just trying to stop myself here. We've got main power, battery power off. So if you want power off, I'm not going to do it here because the, the, the plane will quit. If you want battery power only, you might want that to, on, uh, to, just to use your radio, your UFC radio, for instance, or do you want your power off? Um, this is electrics panel, sorry. I'm still trying to break this damn thing. Right, there we go. Caution reset. What's that, RC, on the electrics panel? Caution reset. Caution reset light resets the main and standby generators, resets some circuit breakers, and clears the electrical system caution light. Roger. And we've got the electrical system caution lights here. And at the bottom, we've got ACFT BAT. ACFC BAT to FLCS light illuminates when the aircraft battery is powering the flight control computer and voltage is too low. 
Why would that be a thing? If this, the generator wasn't working for some reason, I'm guessing it would switch the battery. Yep. Right, we've got our EPU, our emergency power unit. Do we want it on? Do we want it off? Or do we want it normal? I'm going to assume that normal is automatic configuration, so it turns itself on when it believes it needs to be on. Correct. As far as the light, the hydrazine light illuminates when the EPU is using its hydrazine, hydrazine rocket motor to provide emergency power. Um, mm -hmm. Since the rocket's gases are hotter than 1500, you make sure nobody's standing around. The air light illuminates when the EPU is using engine bleed air for emergency. Roger, which one's the square light? Which one's the circular light? The circular light illuminates when the EPU is running. Roger. Okay, excellent work. Right, just a couple of miscellaneous ones to look at now. Right, I'm trying to stop myself dying again. We've got our canopy release, which is going to be uh, it's going to be hard for me to uh, look at this. So, how can it be release handle here? And uh, we've also got a we looked at the slapper, uh, also a button to uh, raise the canopy. Okay, so look through the top yellow, the, the yellow bracket, the top of it, and you'll see a guard right there. You just had your. Oh, yeah, I see it. Right. right, little switch. I haven't found this one, but yeah, we go. Look. Up and down. So, press and hold. Oh, no, just press it once. Haha. <laughs> Right, I was unaware of that. Okay, RC, that was relatively successful. It's not going to be as detailed as Wags because, you know, he's had months to learn this and we've had a couple of days. So, anything else you can think of adding to that, RC? No, I think we covered it all. I hope that was useful and we will see you later.